Hey, what's up guys? John here. America's biggest credit card companies are sitting at the edge of their seat right now. I'm talking about Discover, Visa, American Express, MasterCard. They're all sitting there waiting patiently for a verdict from the White House and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Moving forward to reduce their fees for late payments from between $25 and $40 to only $8. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is proposing a new rule to lower credit card late fees. Meaning that they would take a cut on their profits roughly 75%. 75% reduction on their profit for late fees. What are they gonna do? Well, they're gonna react by likely cutting risk, cutting spending limits, reducing the amount of money they're gonna lend to borrowers that are viewed as high risk. But when I show you what's happening right now in the US economy, and you see what they're likely gonna do next, you'll be able to pivot and move around this thing before everybody else knows what's going on. So take a look at this. So billions are on the line for lenders as White House finalizes credit card late fee. And this is gonna start in two weeks, by the way, January, $8. I'm gonna break it down for you, I'm gonna give you the facts. Please hit the like button, hit the like button, YouTube will share the content, educate more people about what's going on in the US economy, and if you'd like to fix your credit to position yourself for what I think is gonna be the greatest wealth transfer in American history, the greatest transfer of assets we've ever seen, go to greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcy, repossessions, or any negative item on your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com, click the link in the description just below this video, schedule a free strategy session. Take a look at this. So, delinquencies are rising for credit cards, auto loans, and it could get worse. Auto loan credit card delinquencies rates march higher. A growing number of Americans are falling behind on their monthly credit cards and car loan payments, a trend that may harbinger an economic trouble ahead, according to a new report from Moody's Analytics. Findings published, Moody's indicate that household debt jumped $17.29 trillion in the three-month period from July to September, up 1.3% from the previous quarter. It also marks an increase of $3.1 trillion since last quarter. Now, you have to take into consideration 40% of Americans are not paying their student loans. They're already delinquent, 40%. You could just imagine what's happening right now with credit cards because credit card late payments, delinquencies, if you have, you know, your subprime borrower, you're 9.8%. You, so if you were to lend money, your credit card company, you're to lend it to 100 people, one out of 10 would not pay. One out of, you know, 10 out of 100 would not pay right? You start to think about this. You're like, okay, well, it's going from 9.8% in March to 11.1% in March. So over that one year period from March 2021 to 2022, imagine what it will be in January with student loans and everything else baked into this. Uh, higher interest rates, it costs more to service the debt. It's going to mean that this number is going to be going up conservatively. Maybe it goes to 12, maybe it goes to 13, maybe it goes to 14, right? So if you're a lender, and you're lending out money and the average balance in America is over $6,000 on a credit card. One person not paying you back that $6,000 balance on time, you have to imagine, what would that mean? If you're only, that consumer is only gonna get penalized $8 for not paying you back on time, probably gonna increase the likelihood that more people are gonna not pay you back. And so those delinquencies are gonna continue to rise, meaning the risk is gonna to continue to rise, right? So you have to take into consideration where credit card companies are gonna be coming in from. Credit card companies and all lenders are gonna be looking at this very, very carefully. Because if this is what's happening right now with some of these, the biggest credit card companies in America, you could just imagine what is likely gonna be coming for other lenders, right? So take a look at this. If you have great credit, by the way, 740, you're considered very good and 800 considered excellent. You do not want to be anywhere near this 580 to 699 range or 670, 739 range. You do not want to be near there. And if you're getting your uh, report, your information from Credit Karma, just know that's wrong information. Credit Karma is an app, and that app is there to sell you financial products and services. So when you go on the app, it'll say your odds of approval on this credit card, excellent. Odds of approval here, great. All they care about is you clicking that link and signing up. Because if you do, they'll get an affiliate commission, usually somewhere between $80 and $300, just by you clicking the link and signing up. So they don't care if you click a link and you don't get approved for it. They just want to feed you options in which Credit Karma makes money. right? So make sure you're looking at real information before you uh, dive to conclusions on your credit score. So look at this. Subprime cardholders hit hardest by ongoing impact of higher interest. Higher interest rates mean the cost of using credit is more expensive, as consumers will pay more in interest, impacting those with subprime credit who often carry a balance more than others. Now let's look at this. The average credit card balance in America is over $6,000. And with the average interest rate, 
you know, if you have a retail, retail credit card, it might be 31%, might be 32%. Uh, on a traditional Visa card, it might be 25, 26%, somewhere in that range. It just all depends on, you know, who you are as a borrower uh, and the credit card offer. But as an average, we'll put 28% here. You would pay over nine years and 10 months, 11,000 in just interest. Sounds pretty crazy, right? On a $6,000 balance, you pay for basically a decade and you pay $11,000. Right, so if you have this situation, like a lot of people, if more people have a you know much higher balance, they might have fifteen thousand, right, or fourteen thousand, and rather than paying one hundred and fifty a month, they're pay they'll pay two fifty a month, and even with that, and look, they'd have to pay three hundred twenty six dollars a month. So let's say three thirty a month, they would ha they would pay for, for sixteen years for a fourteen thousand dollar balance. You know, many people are looking at this and saying, you know what, I'm not paying, I'm not going to pay, right? A lot of people. A lot of people are starting to do the math on the amount of debt that they have and saying, you know what, I'm not going to pay. I don't advise that. I personally think there's a lot of op a lot of options, a lot of opportunities for people to get out of debt, but this is definitely not one of them. That's for damn sure. You know, you're paying somebody $51,000 in interest to borrow 14 grand. That is ridiculous, right? That's absolutely absurd. But when you're looking at where Americans are, Americans fear they can't pay back their debts. Came back. This came out in Newsweek two days ago, three days ago. A new poll has found that almost half of all Americans with credit card debt are concerned over their ability to pay it back. The poll conducted by Redfield and Wilton Strategies, excluded exclusively for Newsweek, found that 46% of Americans with credit cards are either very or fairly concerned over paying back their spending debts. The survey was conducted on December 8th with a sample size of 1,500 people in the U.S. <laughs> Think about that. Out of 1,500 people, almost 750 of them don't know if they'll be able to pay back their debt. The polling comes after it was revealed in August that Americans owe a staggering combined $1 trillion in credit card debt. Well, I mean, the number is closer to $1.1 trillion. But $1 trillion in credit card debt, according to data from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, debt owed to credit card agencies increased $45 billion, or 4.6%. So you think about this. Credit card companies, they're owed $45 billion dollars. And now they want to come out with something to say, hey, look, we're going to be able to reduce your profit 75%. What do you think these credit card companies are going to do? They're going to look at who is the most risk and they're going to start cutting their ties with these borrowers. That's what they're going to start to do. They're going to start cutting their ties. Look at this. Consumers say that this pitfall is their biggest threat to build wealth. You know the biggest threat to build wealth? Paying somebody else 20, 30% interest. That's one of the biggest threats to build wealth. And, uh, and a lot of people are doing this, but they don't have to do this. There's so many other options. Here's a really, really good option, for example, is this. There's a bunch of these balance transfer credit cards that there's 11 right here in this uh, sample size with 0% interest, 0% interest. So if you were to pay using this and you were to say, let's say you have $6,000 in credit card debt, like the average American, it's not going to put zero here. So I'll put one. You would, it would take one year, right? Basically one year and seven months if you're paying 330 bucks a month. Right? So you can basically get out of debt pretty easily. And these credit cards, most of them are uh, for 12 to 24 months. This one's 21 months. Right, So you can say, you know what? I can't afford 330 a month, but what I can do is I can afford you know, 200 bucks a month. And you'll see people say, okay, you know what? I can almost do that and pay $78 in interest. Right? I'll pay 240 a month and I'll get completely out of debt and, uh, and I'll do it for free. You know, Two years, two months, basically almost 250 a month, you basically get out of that completely for free. There's a lot of options for people with credit card debt. Do not default on your credit cards if you have not already. If you've not already defaulted on these cards, do everything you can possibly do to maintain these banking relationships. You're going to want to maintain them. Because as the banks start tightening up, credit card companies start tightening up, what are they going to do? Or it's going to get harder to reestablish these relationships with them later if you start defaulting now. You want to take care of your debts and you want to do so with the best strategy possible. Again, this is only if you haven't already defaulted. If you have already defaulted, uh, you know, there's other options for you. But if you have not yet defaulted, what I would do is position yourself to establish as many banking relationships as possible, different credit unions, banks, credit card companies, because you don't know which banks, which lenders, who's going to tighten up if maybe all of them do, right? But there's probably going to be more options for those that have more relationships. So you want to take care of your credit score to get these relationships going, at least be in a range where these banks are going to want to lend to you, right? Like this, for example, you're going to need excellent to good credit. You're going to need excellent to good credit. But these are all 21 months 
no interest, excellent to good credit. 21 months. I personally, if you can get a proof of these cards, you know, for you to have excellent to good credit, uh, you're going to need here, it says somewhere between 740 to 799 is considered very good. So you're probably going to want to be somewhere around that 740, 750 range to start getting approved for some of these cards. If you have a late payment on your credit report, whatever you do, do not let it sit there because it will sit on your report for seven years and can drop your score roughly 180 points. So when people say, oh, hey, look, it's a good thing. It's a good thing that, you know, late payments are only $8. People will say, hey, I'm just not going to pay $8. I don't care. What they don't realize is it greatly reduces their ability to form other relationships with other lenders. And so that's what's happening. You're going to start seeing this with student loans. 40% that are not paying January 1 is going to go on their credit report. From October 1 to January 1, that 90-day window, it's going to start going on their credit report. And so that's when they're all going to start getting registered. We're going to start seeing people's credit scores get greatly impacted. And at the same time, banks and lenders are going to continue to restrict capital. What do you think of this entire situation? Drop below. And uh, I'm just crazy how fast the world's changing, right? This is absolutely crazy. If you are intending on investing in real estate, maybe starting a business, getting a lot of credit, maybe getting debt free, putting yourself in a better position. If you have any credit issues, we'd love to give you a free strategy session. I have two new employees just started with us that uh, used to work with Equifax directly doing disputing. So if you have a specific situation or you have any concerns, you know, you can feel free to schedule a free strategy session. You can hop on a call with them and uh, they'll give you some advice and maybe we can help you. If, if so, you know, we'd love to help you. At greatcreditfast.com, you can click the link in the description and uh, catch you next video.